Hey YouTube, welcome to part one of the Easy Glyph project. In this series I'm going to show you a solution for moving sheets of material around when you don't have anyone to help you. Right, I'm just making up part 001. Now, that's supposed to be 200 by 150 plate, but I don't have any 200 by 150 plate, but I do have 100 wide plate, so I've cut two lengths of that, I'm going to TIG weld them together, because I want a nice flat weld on them. Now, a lot of you fellows out there that have been taught how to weld properly might have a better way of doing this. With a little bit of experimentation, I found that the best way to weld these without getting much warpage is to put a tack on each end with a small root gap and then go ahead and weld between the tacks. That seemed to give me a pretty good result, but if anyone has a better idea, I'd like to hear about it. I had a small V on the reverse side of the plates and I ran a very small V down that as well. Hindsight being 2020, I think I could have achieved the same result and possibly a little bit neater by having a slightly larger root gap and just filling it from one side. Part 002 and 003 were just a repetition of the same process with the material cut to a different length. Yep, yeah, they should be okay. Once they cool down, I grind them off. I did pretty good with these. Got them all ground down. And just barely, barely see some daylight at the end here if I hold it down on this side. See, he's pretty good. That one's pretty near perfect. There's no daylight there. And same on that side. And this one's not quite so good. He got a little bit of twist in him, maybe about half a mil, three quarters of a millimetre over the width. But that's okay, I'm going to mount the hinge pieces on this side here and use him as a plate that pulls in. That means the centre will contact first, the hinges will pull it in and probably should make a tighter grip if anything. So next thing to do is to jig up the piece that's going to become the angle. And to jig up the piece that's going to become the angle, I'm going to use this piece of angle. I've always found that a heavy piece of angle on is a very convenient jig to make sure that I get a fairly precise 90 degrees between the two plates. In this case, I wind up the inner edges of the plates with the edge of the angle on. Doing it this way left me with a very nice V to fill the well, which is a full depth of the thickness of the plates. Given the way I'd set this job up, I was very conscious of the potential to weld plates to the angle line inadvertently. So I elected to put a fairly good tack on each end so that I could remove the plates and weld them separately from the angle line. After all, it would be fairly embarrassing to post a video on the internet where I welded my job to the jig that I was using. I'm always a little bit concerned about warpage when I'm doing a long weld. I've found that clamping the job doesn't seem to make a heck of a lot of difference to how much warpage I get. But I did find that by putting a few tacks on the job beforehand that I get a lot less warpage and in some cases none at all, or at least none that's detectable. Now people that have had a proper education in welding can probably explain why that is and exactly where the tacks should be and so forth. I'm just happy to take advantage of the observation that it works. Good penetration on it. And these, I've got to go on here. I've got to grind this spleen. The big ones go on there. And then all I've got to do is make the handle and put them together. Give that a clean up. Give this one a clean up. And I'll get all these ticked on tonight. I used a scrap piece of angle line, which happened to have a square end on it, to steady the tabs. While I put a very small pack on one corner of each tab. This was to allow me to tap them into place if they were just slightly out of position. Depending on your point of view, you could say it's my skill in cutting everything square and placing it in the right position, lining it up and not mocking it when I did the packs. Or you can just say I was lucky, but in any event, I don't need a couple of taps on one of the tabs to make sure they all to get them both lined up and have it in the correct position. A lot of the load is concentrated on the tabs, and the heavier the sheet is carrying, the more load is placed on the tabs. So I wanted to make absolutely certain that these wells were the best that I could do because I planned to carry some heavy sheets with it. For instance, some 8 foot by 4 foot by 1 eighth of an inch, 
which is 2400 by 1200 by 3 mil and the same size but in 4 mil about 5 HPs and considerably heavier so if I can manage to lift that that's quite a load to carry as I say all that force is on the tabs so it is critical in my opinion that, that the wells on them are perfect so I'm welding them from both sides to make sure I get best possible penetration on them because I don't want to break off while I've got that lifted up in the edge. The tabs on this next piece go right out on the edge as the others did but this time they're centered vertically on the plate. Again, I did a couple of very light tacks on the tabs so that I could tap them into the exact position they needed to be before I welded them up. The load on these tabs is mostly compressive due to the design of the easy lift. A weld that's under compressive load isn't really as critical as one that's under shear or tension load. However, I did take just as much trouble on the welds with these. I am a little bit paranoid about the idea of 100 kilos or a couple of hundred pounds of sheet metal falling if the easy lift happens to break while I've got it lifted up on my shoulder. It could do all sorts of damage to me and anything near me. Now well, there we go, that's two main assemblies done. Leave them there to cool, make the handle tomorrow, put it together and test it. When I designed this handle for the easy lift, my idea was to cut it out of a piece of sheet. I don't have any 6mm sheet around, so I've cut several angles on this, and I'm going to weld it together so that it comes out to roughly the same shape as I would have drawn anyway. A little bit different, mainly because it's easier with the angles to do it this way. Probably doesn't look as nice, but hey, I can live with that. Starting at this end here, which is the, the pin goes through here, and there's another pin goes through somewhere around here, the inside of the angle measurement is 70 mils, which is near enough 3 and 7 eighths. And we've got 30 millimetres, which is near enough an inch and 3 sixteenths. We've got 50 millimetres, which is near enough 2 inches. This has got a flat end here, about a 22 and a half degree angle on all of these. 22 and a half angle here but the angle's the same on both ends of this one whereas on all of these others it reverses. This one here both sides will be the same of course because the angle goes in the same direction that's 125 which is near enough to 5 inches. This one here the short side of it is 50 mils which is again close enough to 2 inches. Alright, that's level with the edge of the table and at 90 degrees to it. That's good. Go on and put these others in place so that I can... Hmm, what happened there? I would have thought. Uh, my angles probably aren't measured quite as good as I could have. They're a little bit out, obviously. But that's okay. That's okay, we can work with this. I've just got to distribute it a little bit better and then I can weld the gaps. So I'll make it 256, near enough, 10 and an eight inches long there. Level with the edge of the table, and I'll stamp him in place. All right, now it's just a matter of getting these others put into a reasonably even position. Yeah, okay, it's exactly 10 inches long, which is 254 millimeters. Those all appear even, and we have 129 there and 129 there. Well, this top piece is parallel with the edge of the table. This piece is parallel with the edge of the table, and this piece is 90 degrees to the edge of the table. And I've distributed these other two pieces so that the gaps are pretty evenly distributed. My miter saw only really measures every 10 degrees, so I had to guess where two and a half degrees was. This is what I came up with. It's not too bad, but it does leave a little bit to be desired. I'll tack them in place and then I'll get the other one and tack it in place. I went along and put a very small pack on one side of each of the joins so that I could take the clamp saw and lay up the second side of the handle over the top of the first and make sure I've got both sides exactly the same. Put the other one together in the same spot. Pack him in place so that they're identical. Put 
A bit of gap to weld up on these ones. I don't know why they're that much different. But they look as though they are. That's okay, I think I can. I think I can, I think I can. These wells on the handles are also very critical. They'll have compression, tension and shear forces on them. So I welded one side of each of the joins and set it aside to let some of the heat dissipate out of the handle while I did the other one. And then I rolled it over and welded the other side. I beveled in on both sides and I left a really small root base and very little gap. I'm pretty happy with the penetration and I think the wells are good enough to hold. Otherwise I wouldn't be trying to lift anything with it. I'll let them cool off now for a bit before I go any further on them. They did pull a bit unevenly, but that's okay. By the time I've ground them off and trimmed them up, the holes will be in the right spot and that's the main thing. Thanks for taking the time to watch my video. As usual, there's a link in the description where you can visit my website to download the plans. The build itself is fairly simple, but the leverage arms and the positioning of the hull is fairly critical. Hopefully we'll finish the build in the next video. Don't forget to click like and subscribe for more. Until next time.